Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to Test 2 Plus yet again today. I am Trace, and this is episode 4 of 5 on blood. So far we've talked about what is blood, what does it do, blood diseases, cures for those diseases. You know, we went down, then we went back up again. And today we're going to talk about blood types and why those are important, right? There are different kinds of blood. Blood is not blood. All blood is not blood, right? There are different types. Hopefully you know your blood type, because if something happens, that speeds up the process. Otherwise, they'll have to test and find out what you are, and in the meantime, they have some things that they can do. Human blood types are based on an ABO group system. This is all based on something inside of your blood called an antigen. There are two types of antigens, which is very important, foreign antigens and self antigens. Foreign antigens are substances that come into the body and they trigger an immune response. And this is when your body sends out antibodies like white blood cells to find and attack those invaders like a bacteria or something like that. Uh, and that happens because they have foreign antigens. Our body makes its own antigens, like little licenses on each one of your cells that's like, that's mine, this one's not mine, call in the troops. Each red blood cell contains millions of self antigens. Our body knows about them, they know they're harmless, they don't do anything. The antigens is what give you your blood type. It's important to know your blood type because your immune system is gonna attack anything that doesn't have your antigens, right? However, there are some ways to fudge the numbers here. There are two different parts. There's the ABO group and then there's the positive or negative, which is called the RH. The ABO group is the type of blood you have and it's kind of the one that most people remember. Uh, blood types can be, you know, A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, O positive, O negative, AB positive, AB negative, so on and so forth. If you have type A blood, that means that you have A antigens in your blood and anti-B antibodies. Type B blood is the opposite. Come with me on this. I know it's a little weird. Type B antigens and anti-A antibodies. That means you can't put type A blood and B blood in the same person. If they are a, an A person, they can't take B blood because it has B antigens and anti-A antibodies, right? They will attack them. If you have type AB blood, however, AB, both, that means you have both of the antigens, A and B, and no antibodies. So if you have AB blood, you can receive blood from both A and B donors, but you can only donate blood to other people who have AB antigens, right? So then they won't be attacked. There's one super blood type, which I'm sure you've heard of, called type O. Type O has no A or B antigens, but still creates A and B antibodies. So it's kind of like an unlicensed blood type, to go back to that analogy I made up, right? The blood looks at it and like, I don't know where you're from, but you got them antibodies, so we'll let you stick around. It's crazy. For example, type O folks can donate blood to anybody, A, B, and A, B, because they lack the antigens. So your ABO blood type, it will depend on what antigens you either have or you don't have, because you have to make sure that your blood accepts that new blood and doesn't say, you're not licensed to be here, I'm gonna attack you. So what makes your blood positive or negative? What does that have to do with anything? That has to do with the RH factor. The RH blood group system has 45 different antigens, a different type of licensing system for your blood. But that plus or minus sign only really has to do with the D antigen. The D antigen is the most common in the RH blood group, and it's the one that causes the most severe immune reactions. So that's the one that we track. This is why we find it important to let people know you should probably know your blood type, but we just call the D antigen positive or negative, it makes it easier. People that are RH positive can receive blood from people that are RH negative, but people that are RH negative cannot receive blood that is positive. Make sense? What happens is a body that is RH negative, they'll see that D antigen and they'll be all like, whoa, 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 you definitely don't belong here. 
And then we get back to that attacking thing again. As you can probably guess, there are even more specific types of blood as well. These are just the broader groups, you know, O positive, O negative, AB, and so and so and so on. There's the Kell blood group, the Lewis antigen system, the MNS antigen system. But for the sake of time and the fact that it's already complicated enough, we're just going to stick to the familiar A, B, O, and R, H systems. But go look them up. Kell, Lewis, MNS, super interesting. It's also important to know that your blood type is not something that you get to choose. It's something directly passed down from your parents through your genetics. So if you don't like your blood type, blame your parents. And if you really don't like it, okay, we can do something about it. There are certain instances where your blood type can change. For example, if you get a bone marrow transplant, which you know if you've been tuning in this week, that you get new red blood cells. You get the donor's blood type. So if you get new bone marrow, that bone marrow only knows how to make whatever blood type the donor was. A team at the University of British Columbia developed an enzyme that can also change your blood type by altering the antigens, and it can make type A and B become O, the universal blood. It essentially unlicenses your blood. So why did we develop all of these different types of blood? No one is sure. We have no idea. But what we do know is there's more to it than just naming. One study from the Journal of the National Cancer Institute found that people with type A blood have a 32% higher chance of getting pancreatic cancer than people with type O blood. With AB, it's 51% higher, and B is 72% higher. That's pretty crazy. Another study from Taiwan found type A blood had more risk for stomach cancer than type O. Kidney cancer was more connected with type AB blood. People with type O are protected from dying of severe malaria, but other studies suggest that people with type O might be more likely to be depressed, have high anxiety, or ADHD. There are even uh, other studies that explore blood types and how they affect different disorders and whatnot. You should find out your blood type, moral of the story, and ignore anybody who says that your diet can be influenced by your blood type, that's not even a thing. That's not real. No. There's no blood type diet. Just eat healthy. Anyway, blood type is kind of a mystery. Scientists don't know why we evolved these different licensing antigens, right? We know what came first, though. Or at least we have hypotheses. One theory is that type A came first about three and a half million years ago, and it mutated over time to become type B and then type O. Today, the most common blood type is type O, and we just went over a small number of reasons that O can help you survive longer, which scientists connect type O. It's kind of an evolutionary advantage, right? It's the newest blood type. It's the best blood type, maybe. But this isn't really proven. When DNA was examined from Utsi, the Iceman, longtime Test 2 Plus listeners know who that guy is. If you don't, search our channel and find him. He's the best. Data actually suggested that Utsi had type O blood and he's the best. I don't have type O blood, but I wish I did, so I could be cool like Utsi. What type of blood do you have? Do you know? If you don't, go donate blood, and they will tell you. It's a nice free perk of donating blood. On top of that, though, donating blood is really important to help other people, and we need more of it. We're gonna talk more about that tomorrow when we get into blood substitutes, synthetic blood, and why donating your blood might not actually be that helpful sometimes, but is always needed. Pretty interesting, right? Let us know down in the comments what you think about this episode, and make sure you keep coming back here every day for more Test Tube Plus. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. You can come find me on Twitter if you want to talk about all things blood. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Thanks.